Welcome to Let's Play Gran Turismo 3, episode 67. Alright, so, in the space of just two segments, we have now officially completed all the areas of arcade mode, and we have also completed the Amateur League. And well, now it's time for us to head back over to the Professional League, because that's officially where most of the International A License events are. <coughs> and our first one is going to be the British Duty Car Cup, and I've already decided on which car I want to use for that, and well, I want to, I want to use a car I've not used yet, and that's this. The Aston Martin Vanquish in Derwent Green. So yeah, let's get in the Vanquish. And since I would imagine tuning is going to be necessary, obviously, let's do that. So, gonna put on the racing slicks. I'm also gonna purchase the super slicks just in case, and well. I would imagine engine tuning probably will be necessary for this. Because obviously it's the professional league and well tuning is basically mandatory in the professional league. And I'm also gonna put on I think I'm gonna go for the semi-racing suspension kit. Because I know how heavy this thing is. Unfortunately, however, I know exactly how I'm going to sort that out. So, just going to head down to weight reduction, and I'm also going to do... Actually, yeah, let's do all three stages of weight reduction and see how we go. You know, just to make this car a little bit lighter, and well... Just for comparison's sake, I want to see what the weight of this thing was originally. Okay, 1800 kilos a week originally, and the weight is now down to 1547 kilos. So I've basically dropped about less than 300 kilos off this thing. Anyways. And well, just because I want to do this just in case. Let's now head over to the Professional League and get on with our first international A license event in the Professional League. British GT Car Cup. And uh, also, by the way, those statistics up there are incorrect. I'm pretty sure the 15th of February 2001 was not on a Sunday. Anyways, before I get distracted, this is our prize giving structure. 20 grand if we can win each of these races. It's obviously a single race event as we're going to Trial Mountain, Route 5, and Rome Reverse, and let's now head over to race number one, which takes place at Trial Mountain, and see if we can win. Alright, so clearly it doesn't look as though the slick tyre gamble is officially going to work for this car, and so I gambled with the racing cards and, well, I think now is probably the time for me to switch over to the Super Slicks, because obviously we have a Lotus Motorsport at least in this field, and from what I could tell in the previous attempt, he did not come into the pits, so I think I need to be smart about this, and I need to switch... A and I need to switch over to the Super Slicks, because these are the only tyres eligible to go the full distance. Anyways, attempt two at Trial Mountain. Since I knew very well I was not going to win an attempt number one, 
in my Derwent Green Aston Martin V12 Vanquish. Since obviously this thing does have a V12 engine. Well, the Jack is pretty much the same colour he was in the previous race. And surprisingly, my coherent Vanquish is actually racing in wet for this race, surprisingly. And up front we have two yellow cars, one of them being the Lotus and the other one being the TBR. So yeah, I have noticed heavy cars can definitely tend to chomp up any set of boots that aren't the racing super slicks and well. Since I've now got on the racing super slicks, I am pretty certain this will probably be the sort of predictable race winning strategy that I was wanting to see myself achieve, and that's a dyke. Even though my front tyres are already starting to show some serious wear on the fronts, obviously the rears are still intact because I switched over to the super slicks and I think realistically I did of course make the right choice to put on the super slicks for the second attempt because obviously I knew very well that it wasn't worth risking taking the super slicks up to the end of the race anyway because I still think if I had the slicks on and didn't hit on that previous attempt I still think I would have lost anyway because my because my front tyres would have literally been shot essentially although fortunately however on this attempt these ones are not wearing as much I've definitely got the speed down the back stretch compared to the Lotus. I'm trying to see if I can slot myself in. He tries to shut the door on me, but I slot myself through just before the corner exit, and officially our progression can continue from here. And hopefully, on this attempt, like the previous attempt, we can get a few good laps of close racing and had to short shift there at the fear of spinning the car oh crap I do not know how the Lotus was able to make that one work but somehow it did he literally slotted up my inside on that second part of the chicane or the exit of the chicane I should say and somehow he actually managed to slot himself up into the lead that's unbelievable I would have almost thought for sure that wasn't going to pay off but apparently it did oh fuck me yep okay yeah okay I just knew that was going to happen eventually and the TBR just definitely giving me a push so I can get back into this thing. Oh, can you just fuck off? Just fo just focus on your just focus on your race and try not to rack mine. Fucker. First one I let him off, but second one, that's when I have to react. Because that's when I know if I don't that will just be annoying me. Even though I'm doubtless on saying they probably cannot hear me and they will still be doing whatever it takes to win. That's literally how much assertiveness these AI have. They really do they really don't care if they're alive or dead. Yeah. Considering obviously 
the lap I set on the second lap, because I was literally side by side with the Lotus, my second lap literally didn't register. Although somehow it was still registered as my second lap. And the Elise got loose and oh, Jesus Christ. I do not know how I was able to save that. And the Lotus gives me a push, probably because he has the superior acceleration and handling. Meanwhile, I, of course, have the superior speed. And I think it's fair to say I do now have a margin to the Lotus, but obviously this is still going to be a pretty close race. It's still very much a three-horse race at the moment. And we've pretty much separated ourselves from the rest of the field after three laps, and now I can officially say I'm leading this with an interval. Got a pretty reasonable exit there off the chicane, and I also set a new best lap time of a 131.3. And oh, dicks! Yep, I still cannot drive this thing, but it's fine because I'm leading, and I'm leading by two seconds over the Elise. So. I'm pretty certain these tyres, unlike the slicks, I'm pretty sure the super slicks probably will be successful in lasting the rest of the distance, because these appear to be the only sets of boots I can really use to actually have a shot of winning this race, and I'm pretty confident to say the least. In saying that a win as a result of me putting on the super slicks is definitely a possibility for me to officially taking home a win once again as I have done so so many times in this game now as of which this probably will be win number 213 from what I can make out, if my stats are correct, and we are now halfway, and so 2.4 seconds is now the interval to the Elise. And, oh, damn it! Slowly starting to build up a margin to the Elise, as it looks as though I do now have a grip on this thing. Hopefully, I will manage, of course, to take home the win, but it's just a matter of knowing if winning this event with this Aston Martin is doable or not. Well, I have seen other videos of this car in the past and, well, attempts by other YouTubers have been proven successful, and I think it is doable to win this event using the Vanquish, and I am now 3.2 seconds clear of the Elise, so I put myself up I've built myself up to a relatively sleazy margin after six laps, even though the Elise is starting to close in again, but fortunately this time the fight will manage to keep going up to the end of this race because
coherently, I now have the slicker tyres. And many of you sometimes wonder how exactly I come up with these words and then speed them out of my mouth. So, I think up to this point, a win is definitely on the cards now with the Vanquish. As of which I did of course do all three stages of weight reduction for this. And I would imagine I'm more or less going to have to do the same thing for, for the Shelby Cobra as well, considering obviously I do have ambitions on using that thing as well in the near future. Almost sliding into the wall, but fortunately not. And as I now set a new best lap time by less than a second, and gap is now 4.7 seconds now to the Elise. So hopefully from here, this should hopefully be another race victory taken. by the default of tyre longevity, and officially my fellow Vanquish is now in the pits, and ultimately... It looks as though... I am going to continue extending my margin now, because I am now 6.6 .6 seconds clear of the Lotus, and I think from here, as long as I don't bottle this, I should be able to win the race this time using the Aston Martin Vanquish V12. Hopefully this 12 cylinder motor will officially manage to get me up to victory. Over 500 horsepower V12 motor I might add will get me up to victory. And gap is now decreased once again, probably because probably because I'm wearing down my tyres quicker. But again, I'm pretty confident to say the least in knowing that this time. I do have a better shot of taking these tyres up to the end of the race. That is exactly what I'm going to do. And since I know this time I will not need to make a pit stop officially, I'm pretty certain to say the least that this is probably going to be yet another race win. Here's what me thinks. That's a dike. So heading through the final hairpin turn, as of which these three hairpin turns all follow up consecutively. Gap is now starting to build up once again to the Lotus. And officially, only about less than one and a half tenths of that previous best lap time. I'm trying to keep a hold of this thing as much as I can and officially heading through the hairpin tunnel now, as of which that's exactly what I'm calling that corner, and through the right-hander now. Now, this car is very much getting punchy with oversteer. in the later stages. I'm really fighting for control on this one set of boots. Touching the outside wall. Hoping of course to not drag along the wall through the hairpin. Oh damn it. And 
I do manage to save it, in spite of me being probably way too late on the brakes. And it does look as though the heavyweight is officially going to take the win here at Trial Mountain on attempt number two. Gap is 9.3 seconds now to the Elise. Victory is pretty much guaranteed. There we go. I win race one, and I nearly overlap the Jack. And so, let's now wait for everybody else to finish, as my gap at the end of that race was 9 seconds to the Lotus. Anyways, let's now wait for everybody else, since the Jack is just in front of us. I nearly overlapped the Jack in that race. And officially, attempt number two has proven to be a success. The Super Slicks have managed to survive the distance of this race. And officially, I'm now 20 Grand Wretcher. Alright, so one race is down and officially, I think I'm gonna save this replay because obviously, there have not been many replays that I've saved under broad daylight. And it will surprise me if I do have enough... ...kilobytes of data to officially save all of my replays. Anyways, moving onwards to race number two, where we are heading over to special stage route five. So, 10 laps of Route 5, and pretty much the exact same field as we had in the previous race. So, second race of the British GT Car Cup, taking place at Special Stage Route 5, where Already, in comparison to the AI, I'm off to a bad start. But it won't matter because I'm already starting to close down the interval now to the Jag and the Aston Martin V8, who just ran wide there, and also tried to see if I can slot myself up into third, indeed I do. Unfortunately, there are just two cars in front of us that we need to be considerate about. So, it is doable to win this event using the Vanquish, and I'm pretty certain, to say the least, that I will manage to win these other two races. As long as I know tyre mileage is not going to be as much of an issue. So, well, looks as though the Elise really got loose there through the chicane. That was probably the only reason why I managed to take the lead as soon as I did. And, officially, as we now head down this long front stretch, I can definitely say victory with these super slicks is a possibility as we now head through the tunnel and ultimately now heading down of course through this little bus stop section. Running a little bit wide there, but fortunately the wall does not extend itself beyond that point because that's where the Clubman circuit goes, even though obviously the Clubman circuit is not available in this game, unfortunately.
Meanwhile, I'm now 4.1 seconds clear of the Elise, and officially, it looks as though from here I am probably going to be en route to a possible victory, maybe. Because obviously, this thing has a long front stretch, and I set a new best lap time by 10 seconds. So my car is definitely up to the performance it should be at in terms of speed, and looks as though in the early stages now I have pretty much got a grip on this thing. And hopefully, I will of course manage to hold on. the race lead, and at the moment I'm looking to do just that because I'm continuing to extend my interval over the Lotus, and I guess before the start of this race I could have removed the engine tuning, but obviously even though at the moment it looks like I'm dominating this thing, I am pretty certain it will only be a matter of time until we know for sure if my car is overpowered or not. Well, at the moment I would probably say yes, but under the most unorthodox of circumstances, I would imagine there is still a possibility, to say at the very least, that I could still throw this away if I'm not careful. Because I'm still attempting to weave around a lot. Oh, bollocks. It's alright, it's fine. I caught it before it went to the wall. So, heading through this bus stop section now. Now, down into the hairpin. gap is still 10 seconds, so I have not lost any time to the Lotus. Although I would imagine for Rome, I probably will need to hold on to the engine tuning, because I would imagine That is more or less entirely necessary from what I can make out, and officially we are now up to four laps complete here in the second race of the British GT Car Cup. So, 12.6 seconds now, the interval to the Lotus. I am still holding on to a relatively sleazy lead, and that's a wall. And I'm pretty certain that from here I will probably manage to hold on to a comfortable race lead. So, gap is still continuing to extend in the outside wall just a little bit there, but fortunately, however, I'm keeping myself intact with where the track goes and where my car goes, and officially, I am slowly building up that margin, so I think it's fair to say domination at the present time is probably the only word I can think of. And 
I made some hard contacts there with the garden rail as we went through the tunnel. Although for me at least, I am still continuing my streak of leading each of these laps, which I must admit now has definitely become a tear away from the rest of these AI. I am clearly on a tear away streak at the moment in comparison to the AI at the moment. Officially, the gap is now up to 20 seconds as we complete six laps here at Route 5. Now it is officially the Tuscan that takes over second place from the Lotus. So I think the TBR must have probably been tired of been staying behind the Lotus for so long and now he's officially decided. Oi, I want some of that shit. I want to fight for the lead with the green nest and Yeah, that might be I'm just Doing a terrible southeastern English impression. Oh, I think we've got the lead this time, mate. I would say the win is as good as ours. at the moment and only a tenth off my previous lap time so our times I'm setting at the moment are definitely proving to be reasonable. So lap 8 here at Route 5 and I'm pretty certain a victory up to this point is probably going to be guaranteed because I'm pretty much a pit stop ahead now of the TBR Tuscan and I would say the Bast, the V8 Vantage is still fighting hard there with the Jag. I would imagine that even if I do make a pit stop before the end of the race I will probably still emerge as the leader because that is how dominant I am. Made a little bit of contact there with that outside guardrail. As of which we do now head through the chicane once again, trying to avoid hitting the fence. And having to shift down so I don't make contact with the wall. And officially, I think it's fair to say that domination is the only word I can use to describe how this race has gone. Yep, I am 31.3 seconds clear of the Tuscan for this race. That's pretty much a confirmation. So, 32 and a half seconds, pretty much the margin now to the
Tuscan and I've now just overlapped the V8 Vantage as of which, unlike Tri Mountain, I am actually going to overlap somebody in this race because that is apparently how much better I am at this circuit than the AI. And, oh shit! Yep, okay, this car is definitely getting touchy now. Alright, so. Final lap. We're at Route 5 and officially. I think it's fair to say, regardless of what happens at this point, as long as my controller doesn't suddenly die on me. I think it's fair to say that I am definitely going to win this race against all odds. Because that is how much more dominant I was in that race. And I think it's fair to say that I probably would have won this race even without the engine tuning. So, uh, whoops. I forgot to remove that. Although it won't matter too much because I am pretty sure the AI will be stronger than me around. Road reverse. Because there are definitely certain circuits where the AI are faster than me, and certain circuits where I am faster than the AI. You know, this is definitely one of my circuits in terms of advantages. And yep, the Jag is now in the pits, so officially that does mean I'm going to overlap two cars before the end of this race, it looks like, and yep, yeah, I am going to overlap the Jag, and officially, it's taken me just under 15 minutes to do that entire race. So there we go, I win race 2, and I overlap both of the red cars in this race. So, let's now wait for everyone else to finish. Right, there we go. So in the end of that, I basically decimated the opposition in that race because I won by 41 seconds over the TBR, then it was the Lotus in third, my other Vanquish finished in fourth, and then at the end of the race, as you just saw, I managed to overlap both the Aston Martin V8 Vantage and the Jag XKR. And so, let's now head over to the final race, which takes place at Rome Reverse. And where, because I am recording this on a scorching summer day, I can tell very well that I'm only just starting to get hot in here. Anyways, let's get through the final race. It is go for Rome Reverse. And where I am pretty certain with my super slick strategy, I will of course manage to win this race. As long as I don't spin out too much. And yep, I clearly force the TBR there into the wall, and officially the Lotus Elise leads the way here in Rome, and surprisingly the V8 Vantage is trying to see if we can get a piece of the action up front. This now allows me to take over third position, and I'm now trying to see if I can look for an opening on the Vantage, I slot down the inside, he gives me a push, I do manage to officially slot myself up into the second position here in Rome, where 
ultimately it now looks like it could very well be another one of those days where I am fighting hard with the Lotus Elise. As of which that is exactly what I predict is going to happen. So it is Aston versus Colin. Or oh, correction. David Brown versus Colin Chapman once again. Considering they were notably the founders of both Aston Martin and Lotus respectively. Even though David Brown was one of them, officially. Anyways, racing for position. I do seem to have the superior speed as we head down the back stretch. This V12 engine definitely has the pace to keep up with the Elise, even though I have no idea what sort of engine the Elise originally has. I will probably need to do some research on that, but I think the Elise probably has a four-stroke, but I don't know for sure what type of engine the Elise has until I've done research. Anyways. The V12 has officially taken the lead away from the Elise, who now runs wide, gets a snap of oversteer for good measure as we head through the Colosseum corners and down through the palm trees, now heading down into the final corner, heading past the grandstand, to now starting the third lap here in Rome. This is definitely a proven circuit where the AI are quicker than me when it comes to championship events, but I'm hopeful in saying that I will of course manage to sweep two out of the three events in the British GT Car Cup as we now head through to this section of Coliseum Corners heading past the palm trees yes, and heading down through these two right-handers now the Elise makes hard contact with me. Fortunately, however, I do manage to catch it before I scrape the outside wall. The Elise tries to fend me off. I have got a stronger exit. We are side by side as we head down to this second section of Colosseum Corners. And officially, It does look as though I am going to hold on to the position as I make a little contact there with the outside wall for good measure. But fortunately, I did manage to hold on to the advantage as we now begin lap number four. Here at Room Reverse, it is very much round two of myself versus the Lotus. We are both pretty much the clear favourites to win this race over the rest of the field. And the Lotus is trying to close in once again, but I am defending hard. He gives me a bump. I am not intimidated by it. And ultimately, I am now leading this thing by half a second. So we're definitely locked in combat for this race. This is very much a two-horse race from what I can work out and I think the V8 Vantage by now has probably fallen back 
from where he was originally. So gap is now two seconds to the Elise. Not entirely certain on knowing if that gap will extend or not. Probably will, but obviously I'm not going to make any guarantees. As the gap is now 2.8 seconds, so it could very well be a case of where my tyres are proving, of course, to be more durable than those of the Lotus up to this point. Although we will have to wait and see to be sure. So, I think the margin up to this point has pretty much stabilised. Although it doesn't matter too much because I still set a faster slap anyway. And that's a pavement. Anyways. Yep. Four seconds now, so... I think it's pretty much fair to say that I am starting to eke out a margin. To the Elise up to this point in the race. I think a margin up to this point is more or less what the case will be. Four seconds. Oh, that's a wall. And yep, a new PB. And also a new best lap time by virtually a second. So, 5.4 seconds, now the margin to the Elise. I'm just gonna... <laughs> Shoo. Fuck, I sneezed. I'm gonna have to wipe the side off. Shoo. Fuck, I still sneezed. Just when I was about to hold my nostrils, it just came out. Maybe because... Might be because of how fucking scorching it is outside my house right now. And because of how much pollen there is in the air. Probably what caused me to sneeze. Either that or my room is just very dusty. Which is basically what it is. So gap is now 6 seconds to the road to Solis, and I think it's fair to say up to this point that interval is going to keep extending. So it looks as though the field has pretty much been separated now. Because obviously rubber banding in the professional league is nowhere near as strong. as it is in the because obviously rubber banding in the
professional league is nowhere near as strong as it is in the beginner and amateur leagues and so I'm pretty certain the margins are going to stay the way they are because obviously I now have a healthy lead over the because I now have a healthy lead over the Lotus Elise up to this point so 8.4 seconds now the margin as we come up to the penultimate lap here in Rome as of which we now have just two laps to go following this one oh fuck me and officially I also set a new best lap time by 6 tenths of a second Just two laps left now here in Rome. I would imagine it probably is going to be a while before everyone else finishes. to say I am definitely going to win this event by the time we get to the end of the next lap because I now have a reasonable enough margin to probably win this event over the Lotus. He must have really fallen back in terms of his pace as we now begin the final lap here in Rome and where I am pretty certain this will probably be the victory lap so Margins continuing to extend here. I'm not pushing particularly hard on the webs because I don't need to. Because I'm pretty sure the interval is building up by probably two seconds a lap. And I think it's fair to say that at the least I will probably win this race by about 30. 14, possibly even 15 seconds by the time we get to the end of this race. Looks like I'm going to come up just short of overlapping these two back markers once again. Even though I've come tantalisingly close to overlapping both of these guys, I'm pretty certain it will not be possible for me to overlap them. Even though both of them are right in front of me, I don't think it's going to be possible me to overlap them. Meanwhile I come across the start finish line and I set a reasonable EP on the final lap. And so let's now wait for everybody else to finish as I just approach the two back markers. Alright, everyone is across the line. And officially, both myself and the Lotus were clearly way the fuck ahead of everyone else. And as of which, the TBR Tuscan, he pretty much had a boring race overall because nobody was challenging him for third. But meanwhile, I did notice there was some great action between the bottom three. Because that was actually a pretty close race between 
the bottom three once the Vanquish had pitted. I mean, they were nearly a lap down by the time I got to the finish line. Although fortunately, however, I do have a replay saved, and let's now... Let's, uh, let's now head over to what our prize car will be. And today it is... Oh. It is another Aston Martin Vanquish. What a surprise. Except, not really, because obviously... This is a car I already have, and I would imagine I'll probably be able to sell that thing for 70 grand. Anyways, that's our first international A license event done, and next time we shall be doing the FF challenge. So, at the completion of that, we are now 72.3% complete with this game. And officially, I now have 214 wins to my name. And this is our prize car. In Solent Silver, and Aston Martin Vanquish. And well, as much as I really want to keep a hold of this thing, the truth is, I already have one of these things, so I'm going to do the only appropriate thing, and well, that's just sell it for money. Anyways, call me what you will, but obviously I still get money at the end of the day for a car I already have, and I see no purpose of keeping it. And so, next time we shall be doing the professional FF challenge. So yeah, stay tuned for that.